We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. All right, well, my name is Matt. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, I serve here at ACC as one of the pastors and it's uh, one of my favorite roles about my job is on most Sundays, I get to open up this book on this stage and teach out of it. Uh, we're unashamedly in love with the words of God here at ACC. So if you grab your Bible and open up to Ephesians chapter 2, if you don't own a copy of God's Word, we got your back. Uh, just reach underneath the chair in front of you and grab that Bible and write your name in it, and you can take it home with you. All right, that's kind of a, a Bible we want you to have. All right, so while you're, while you're turning there, uh, have you guys ever noticed that when you turn on the TV at like 2 in the morning, three in the morning, there's going to be something on, right? What is it? Infomercials, right? Isn't it amazing how infomercials have this incredible power? There somehow you'll be flipping through, trying to find something interesting to watch, and when you land on an infomercial, for whatever reason, it like sucks you in, doesn't it? Or is that just me? Like, maybe it's just me, but if, when I see the infomercial, the way they word things, the colors, the graphics, the before and after, I'm just like, I can't stop watching. I don't know what it is, right? But an infomercial, you're going to notice, has four parts to it, right? There's the, the, the problem, and then the solution, and then the demonstration, and then the cost, but we all know there's actually another part to the infomercial, right? There's more than four parts. We're going to get to that today also. But the four basic parts to an infomercial, you're actually going to see in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to get to see this, this, this four-step thing, this infomercial, as it works its way out. Before I get into that, though, hopefully you're all there now. Let's open in a word of prayer. God, right now I pray that as we open up your word, that it would be your words, your thoughts, and your truth that ultimately are what are heard today. God, I pray that no one would walk away hearing the words of Pastor Matt, but that instead all of us would be able to hear your words, your truth, that we'd be able to apply those things to our life and we'd be more like you because of it. And we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the first part of an infomercial is the problem. One of the things you're going to notice about the problem part of an infomercial is oftentimes it's a problem that you didn't even know that you had. You're sitting there watching and they're talking about something and you're like, wow, yes, that totally happens to me. I didn't even realize that this is a deal, that other people are thinking about this. This is a problem. Well, the truth is the problem we're going to explore today in Ephesians chapter 2 is a problem that many people have and they don't even realize they have it. Now, remember though, Ephesians was written from uh, Paul to the church in Ephesus as a letter right? And it was written specifically to Christians. It was written to people who already are aware of the problem. So in this infomercial, we get to hear about the problem from people who are on the other side, people who have already bought the product, okay? And so here we go. You're going to see that the problem comes in three parts. The first part we see in verse one of chapter two, it says, but you, or once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. So the first part of the problem, and I've never opened up a, an infomercial. I've heard of infomercials where there's a little bit of a grease that you can't get off or a stain in the carpet that won't come out. But I've never turned on an infomercial and said, here's the problem, you're dead. Like we've never experienced that infomercial before, right? But the first part of the problem that we see, and it's, it's something that all of us in this room have experienced because all the way back in the garden, remember God was, he put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and he warned humanity and he said, listen, whatever you do, don't eat from this tree because if you do, you will surely die. 
It was a warning all the way back at the beginning. And Adam and Eve did what they weren't supposed to do. Let's not just blame them. You and I, every day, we do what we're not supposed to do. We have this perpetual state of really being like the walking dead. We're, we're dead. We're born into this sin nature. We're born into this, this problem, and, and we are spiritually dead. We're spiritually dead. We're basically like stillborn, spiritually stillborn. And so, I don't know, like it, it's, that's a pretty big problem. It's a pretty big problem. Here's the second part of the problem. It also starts with the letter D, if you're taking notes. Not only are you dead, but you're also deceived, according to Paul, right? Ephesians chapter two, verse two says, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in this unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. So here's the second part of the problem. Not only are you spiritually dead, but according to the Bible, you're also deceived. Now, again, this is people on, on the other side of having the solution. Hopefully, most of us in this room, we've already, we're aware of the solution. We've already bought the product that's being sold in this infomercial, okay? But for, for, we all have been in this position at some point in our life. And, and for many of us, we still understand what it looks like to be spiritually dead and to be deceived. Because essentially, this kind of deception, what it is, is Satan, according to this scripture, wants to sell you something, right? He wants you to believe that what is right is actually wrong, and that what is wrong is actually right. That's his whole gimmick, is to get out there and confuse the concept of truth in our minds so that the world actually believes that things we've always known were good, we now see them as bad things. And things that we've always thought were bad, we now somehow see them as good things. Because he is a deceiver. And according to scripture, if you don't buy this product that's being talked about in this infomercial, you're not only dead, but you're also deceived. Talk about things that used to be right are somehow now wrong and vice versa. I mean, you look, turn on the news for just a second. I mean, just pay attention to what's happening in this world, and you can see that Satan wants to lie to you about what's good and what's bad. I mean, I, I could make a whole list. I got time maybe for one. You know, somehow it's now okay to castrate children at their will. In fact, I saw there are at least two states trying to pass laws that will put parents at risk of losing their parental rights if they don't support their children in that decision. That your children could become a ward of the state if you don't support their desire to, I mean, you just think about this. Isaiah 5, verse 20 says this. Stay where you are in Ephesians, but Isaiah 5, I'll put it on the screen, says, what sorrow for those who say that evil is good and good is evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter. What scripture says, how terrible it is for those who go out and try to take the concept of truth and twist it around so to the point where, because we all have this, this, we're spiritually dead, we're deceived, that we buy into these lies where we believe good things are bad things and bad things are good things. Whoa, what sorrow for those who say those things. You see, at the end of the day, Satan is a deceiver, and he knows how to appeal to your sin nature. He knows how to deceive you and how to, to give you what you want if you just would sacrifice the truth. Here's the third problem. It also happens to start with the letter D, because I'm a preacher, all right? We are also depraved. This problem is a three-part problem. We're dead, we're deceived, and we're depraved. You know, in infomercials sometimes, you have somebody, and they're like in a home all by themselves. They're maybe scrubbing something, and the, the grease stain's not coming off, and they're sitting there, and they're scrubbing, and all of a sudden, a voice will come in, almost like a voice from God, and it will say something like, does, does grease on your oven have you down? 
and the woman will look up. <sighs> yeah. Well, here's, here's, does death, deception, and depravity have you down? This is a pretty big problem. If you go into verse three, it says this, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. This is a really big problem. According to scripture, we, we see in this infomercial of Ephesians chapter two, the problem's huge. Spiritually dead, deceived, depraved. Have you ever heard the phrase before someone say, hey, you should just follow your heart? You ever heard someone give you that advice before? Can I tell you that when you look at the problem of, of our human nature, knowing that you're spiritually dead and that you are deceived and that we are naturally just depraved unless we have this product that's about to be explained, the last thing you should do is follow your heart. The Bible says that your heart is like the most wicked of it all. It wants to deceive you and to, 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 you're just depraved. Don't follow your heart. Stop doing that. What you should do is follow God's word and his truth. It doesn't matter if you think something feels good, it seems right to you, it makes more sense to you, all those are just other ways of saying to follow your heart. The truth is that we have this problem, and this problem is that our hearts are spiritually dead, deceived, and depraved. Don't follow them. Don't follow those thoughts. But then Paul goes on into the next part of this infomercial. The next part of an infomercial, right, is the solution. You tell everybody the problem that they have, and then you're going to show them the new product, the thing that you're trying to sell them, how it's going to fix their lives and bring more hours back to their lives and bring a smile back to their face, the solution. And these are some of the, the, the best two words of Ephesians chapter 2 you're going to see right at the beginning of cha- verse 4. And here's what it says. It says, but God, hey, you know what? You are dead you are deceived, you are depraved, but God had a plan. But God steps in to your problem and offers you a solution. And it says this, but God is so rich in mercy that he, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. Hey, you know that whole problem that you have? You're spiritually dead? Well, guess what? There's a product that will bring you back to life. God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though you were dead because of your sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. And then it says this, it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Here's the product, I think, that's being mentioned here in this verse. You got this problem, and the product is is beautifully, right, through Jesus Christ, these these two words I want to teach you. It's called grace and mercy. You can have access to grace and mercy through Jesus Christ. Now, these two words, you might think of them the same way, that grace is the same thing as mercy. I want you to understand they're very different, right? Mercy is when you don't get a punishment that you deserve, When you deserve a punishment and somebody says, you know what, you deserve this, but I'm not going to make you have to pay the consequences, I'm going to withhold that, that is called mercy. Now grace, on the other hand, is when you're freely given something that you did nothing to earn. Somebody gives you something, you didn't work for it, you didn't do anything to deserve it, it's just given to you freely. That's called grace. And what we see in this one scripture, right, it says God is so rich in mercy, he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. You ready for this? It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. It's only by grace that you have been saved. You see, this product is pretty amazing. They're they're making a claim. Paul is making a claim in this infomercial that this product has the ability to bring you back to life. It says in verse six, it says, for he raised us from the dead. 
along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. How many of you are leaning into this infomercial? You're like, I want to know more. This is pretty exciting stuff, right? You're thinking, wow, this product, I recognize now that I, I'm uh, spiritually dead, that, that I'm depraved, I'm deceived, and that there's a product that can somehow fix all of this? That leads us to the, the third part of an infomercial, which is the demonstration. The demonstration. Now, this is really interesting in Scripture. In an infomercial, you know, what's really powerful about the demonstration is that you want to now, you're looking at them, they say, you got this problem, we got the solution, but I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm thinking what? Prove it. I want to see you take this product and fix this problem. I want to see the problem get fixed with my own eyes. I want to experience it. And here's what Paul says in verse 7. He says, so God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Do you know what this verse says about the demonstration? Get this. You ready? He says that you are the demonstration believer. You are, are the demonstration. Let me ask you this real quick. How many of you in this room, because you've made a decision to follow Jesus, you now experience the blessing and joy that comes from being a follower of Christ? Can you make some noise for a second? Listen, when I watch an infomercial, I want to see them get the carpet really, really filthy, right? I want them to pour wine on it. I want them to put soil on it. I want them to like you know, put dog urine on it. I want them to make it filthy. And then I want them to take that product and I want them to show me as they go over that carpet that it comes out as good as it was before they spilled all that stuff on it. I don't know about you, but I want to see the demonstration. And when we go out into the world and we say, listen, there's a problem that all humanity shares. We are spiritually dead. And, and without Christ, we are deceived and we are depraved. But there's this product. It's called mercy and grace. And it's available to us through Jesus. And if you want to see the difference that it makes, if you want to see a before and after, I would hope that you would be able to say to your brothers and sisters and friends and coworkers, just look at my life. I hope that I can be a demonstration of what it looks like before and after Christ. In fact, I don't know if you've ever been told this, but a testimony. If you've ever had someone ask you to share your testimony. A testimony is really simple. It's three parts. It's, let me tell you about my life before Christ. And then let me tell you about the part where Christ then became a part of my life. And then let me tell you about the part after Christ. Before, then, after. Three parts to a really powerful testimony. You could probably maybe even find a way to share your testimony in just one minute. Some of you got some really long testimonies. That's great. It's beautiful. But the power is there because you are the demonstration of this product, believer. In one of the best examples of the power of a testimony, there's a... In, in the book of Luke, there's a demon-possessed man, and Jesus goes to him and, and frees him of his demon possession. And then he says this to him in Luke chapter 8, verse 39, and he says to the guy, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went all through the town proclaiming the great things that Jesus had done for him. If there's ever a person who's going to be able to show a before, during, and after, it's a man who's been, this, go read about this guy who's possessed by a demon, and he's able to go and say, hey, you guys already know what I was like before Jesus, and then Jesus came, and he healed me, and look at the joy, and the, the healing, and the, the wholeness now that I found in Jesus. There's something powerful about the demonstration and Paul makes it really clear that you are the future example. You are the examples of the incredible wealth of his grace. Now, the fourth part 
of, of a good infomercial has got to finally, you're, you should be leaning in at this point. You realize you got a problem. You, they've told you about this product. They've demonstrated it, hopefully well. You know, hopefully the demonstration went well and, and they're seeing now that, wow, this thing actually works. And so you're leaning in and now is where they come in to close the deal, right? The last part is called the cost. What is this thing going to cost me? I want to know. And if we keep reading in Ephesians, now at verse 8 of chapter 2, it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a, what? It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. In other words, you ready for this? The cost of this product Zilch, goose egg, it will cost you nothing. It costs Jesus a ton, but it's not going to cost you anything. I don't know about you, but if I'm watching an infomercial and I see this problem and I see this product, that the solution to my problem, and then they, they, they demonstrate it and it's amazing, and then they go to the last part and they say, and by the way, this is yours completely for free. How many of you are skeptical? How many of you know that the moment you call for that free thing, right, you're going to have to pay for shipping and handling, right? They're going to want a credit card, and, and if you don't send it back within three months, then they charge you. There's always going to be a gimmick. But here's the beauty. Uh, one of the, the mysteries of, of the gospel is that there is no gimmick. You have a problem. God provides this solution, it's been demonstrated by people around you. You should be able to see the before and after. And then he says, listen, and the cost of this thing for you is nothing. Out of love for you, God offers this product to you, this mercy and grace through his son Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. It's being offered to you for free. It's a mystery. Please don't misunderstand this. This isn't a gift that everybody just gets. You have to call in. You have to grab it. You have to accept this gift. Now, I said there are four parts to an infomercial. But I think we all know that there's never just four parts to an infomercial, right? At some point, you're thinking, okay, I know the product. I know the solution. I know the, the demonstration. I know the cost. I think they're about to wrap up. But then they're going to say what? But wait. There's more. Right? You come on. You guys do that with me. But wait. but wait, there's more. There's something else. I mean, you're, you got this product and I get access to it for free. And then I'm watching and they say, but wait, there's even more. I'm thinking, all right, now's the gimmick. Now it's the part that's going to cost me something. But no, it goes on. Ephesians 2, the mystery gets even crazier. I would even say maybe even a little scandalous. You see, Ephesians 2 goes on and says that one of the most powerful effects when you buy this product is this thing called unity. That one of the things that you get, the but wait, there's more. I'm thinking, all right, it's usually, well, if you buy one, you get a second one free. Or if you buy one now, you don't have to pay interest. Or if you buy one, we're going to throw in this other product. But here's the product. If you buy this, 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 if you accept this free gift of mercy and grace, it comes with a whole dose of this thing called unity. Unity in the body. I want to read some more of Ephesians to you, but let me first paint this, this word picture for you. Have you ever been out to dinner with a large group of people and at some point the waiter or waitress brings you the bill, right, the check, and what you're doing is you all pass that thing around trying to figure out how much to put on your card or how much cash to put in the pile, right? You're all kind of in a moment squabbling for a second over, over whether or not one person's going to tip enough or the other person got that sweet tea they ordered or whatever. And you're kind of, have you guys all learned by now you never want to be the last guy in that uh, in transaction, right? You're the guy who's making up for whatever everyone else forgot on that bill. But imagine for a moment you're sitting at that table and you're kind of trying to figure out who owes what and then as that's happening you get a text message and it's completely legitimate, it's not a, a, a trick, it's not fraud and you find out in that moment that you just inherited 
$300 billion. Now the richest person in the world. Would you care in that moment whose iced tea didn't get covered? What would you probably do? You know, just keep your credit cards, keep, take your money back. I got this. You're not going to care about the little, you know, $100 bill. You just inherited $300 billion. You're not going to worry about it. And there's this truth that we find out about in Scripture that when you are brought into this family of Christ, when you buy this product that's been sold in the infomercial, when you understand this incredible gift of, of free grace and mercy and the power that is in it, that you become, you, you stop caring about all these little squabbling of earthly matters. It just becomes less important to you because you've been reconciled through Christ. Let's, let's read about this. In Ephesians 2, starting in verse 11, it says, Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it only affected their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel, and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. So what this does is it sets up this picture. You have uh, Jewish people and Gentile people. Gentile just means not Jewish people, right? So you have these two groups of people, and they thought differently. They acted differently. They labeled each other. You know, there was like this whole like name calling, you uncircumcised heathens. They had these different identities. They didn't get along They didn't agree on things. And then it goes on in verse 13. It says, but now, there it is again, but now, through Jesus, you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us saying, no more squabbling over the bill. No more figuring out whose iced tea wasn't paid for. He's brought peace into this situation. He says, he united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups together as one body. Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility toward each other was put to death. Let me do my best to really respect what this passage is saying for a moment. I want you to understand that if you are a follower of Jesus right now, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus has changed your life. I want you to know that you have more in common with a stranger on the other side of the world Someone living in India who's also given their life to Jesus that you've never met them before, you don't know their name, you don't speak their language, you like different music, you like different food, you're probably never going to meet them this side of heaven, but you have more in common with them than you do with a blood relative who doesn't know Jesus Christ. And yet somehow what we like to do because of our, the fact that we're, we're dead, we're spiritually dead, We let Satan deceive us. Our minds are depraved. What we want to do instead is play around and squabble over a bill and try to figure out who owes who what and and what we label each other and we divide each other and we give all these, these little titles to each other. And what we learn about in scripture is that we have been made part of one body. We've been reconciled that there's been peace offered to us through the blood of Jesus. In fact, as our what now, God, this morning, I want to give this one thought to you to just kind of 
think about, and it's this. The mystery of unity is to find your core identity in Christ. If you want to be unified with other people that are brothers and sisters in Christ, what it is, the secret to it, right, is to recognize the thing that unites you is the fact that Jesus died for both of you, that you've accepted that free gift. Instead, what we want to do is find ways to divide. Let me tell you where your identity is not in, okay? I don't care how controversial my statements are about to be, okay? Your identity is not found in the color of your skin. Your identity is not found in your norms and your traditions. Your identity is not found in the borders that you call your country. Your identity is not found in your language or your customs. It is not found in your age. It is not found in your preferences. It is not found in your gender. It is not found in your favorite sports team. Yeah, the list could go on and on of all the ways that we've come up with to divide ourselves. Listen, the truth is that because we're spiritually dead, because we're depraved, because we allow ourselves to be deceived, we've come up with all sorts of ways to, to divide each other. And I want you to know all those things I just listed, those are all man-made things. Those are all man-made ways that we've come up with to divide each other. Might as well say, hey, everyone with freckles on this side and everyone without freckles over here. Hey, everyone with long, straight hair over here and everyone else over here. Like, that's just man-made. There's actually only one thing that we recognize actually pulls everyone together in this perfect unity makes us one part of the body of Christ that says that we now have peace, that we have been reconciled, and it's because we've, you and I, if you're a brother or sister in Christ, we've given our lives to Jesus. And Jesus' blood has reconciled us. I know that's scandalous to a lot of people. For a pastor, a white pastor, to get up on stage and say, listen, brother, sister, we are reconciled. A lot of people would say, huh, wait, hold on. I would ask this, why as recipients of endless grace and mercy, would we wanna squabble over earthly things that are just temporary? When we can focus on the fact that we've been reconciled to be part of one body for eternity, now, let me tell you real quick what I'm not saying this morning. I want to be really clear. Here's what I'm not saying. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't seek to, to focus on injustice when it occurs, even within the body of Christ. When there's injustice in the world, we ought to, to care about it. We ought to, the, the Bible tells us that our heart ought to, to yearn for justice and to seek resolution, Right? It also doesn't mean that we shouldn't seek to understand people who are different than us. If you've got someone around you who thinks differently than you, one of the most loving things you can do is to lean into understanding people in the way they think differently. But here's the secret, the mystery of unity. It's these things that separate us when you're working with your spiritually dead, depraved, and deceived mind, you're gonna let those differences divide you when if you actually realize that you've been reconciled into one body through Christ, that when you find those things that need to be talked about, those things are important to talk about, but it's not so that you can divide over them. It's so that the one body can become healthier. When you got one part of your body that's hurting, the other part of the body is gonna, gonna all kind of work on fig figuring that out so that the body can be stronger. But Satan, man, Satan wants to deceive us. He wants to divide us. He wants us to live outside of this truth. And the truth is that the mystery of unity is to find your core identity in Christ alone. We are unified through Christ. We are reconciled with Christ. We have been brought into a peaceful situation through Christ. We can argue about past injustices we can figure out who owes who what. We can live in a perpetual victim mindset. Or, get this, we can see that we have been reconciled through Christ and simply love people as brothers and sisters in Christ. 
You know how this wraps up? Verses 18 through 22. What it says is that all of us who are uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, that we are all being built together, that we are on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. It says that you and I are like bricks, each one of us, and that we're bricks being placed and that together we're building the temple where God resides. And I don't know about you, but I wanna be in that. I wanna be part of that. I want to know that as my brick gets placed, man, Paul is part of the same structure. Peter is right there, part of that foundation. That you, brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't care what your preferred language is. I don't care the color of your skin. I don't care if you're male or female. I don't care about any of that. If you're a brother and sister in Christ, I want to be part of this structure and build this temple where God lives with us. That's what excites me. It's a secret of unity. So as this infomercial wraps up, I think the voice you're going to hear right before you change the channel to something else is going to say something like this. Hey, order now and become unified through the blood of Christ. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for the free gift that you offered to us. It seems too good to be true that you'd willingly allow your son to come and die on the cross in, in my place, in our place. That I, I deserve the punishment of death. That's what I freely deserve. And yet you show mercy to me. And then you offer this and extend this gift of grace where you offer me a relationship with you. You take away this problem of death and depravity and deception And you bring in this this incredible solution of mercy and grace through Jesus. And then you allow me to demonstrate the difference that it makes in the lives of other people and in my life. And you offer all this completely for free to those who place their faith in you. God, we thank you that because we have given our lives to you, those of us who are brothers and sisters in Christ, that you have reconciled us to one another that we have more in common with each other than even a blood relative who hasn't yet put their faith in you. Let us live like one body together in that kind of perfect unity that only you provide. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this. You belong at ACC.